if you have any ideas or thoughts on what you think should we go work good on here, you can submit the ideas to us. Um, you can email me to uh, visit roseman at gmail.com. Uh, so we're looking at um, submitting this grant. Um, as for the cost, I'm not sure what it would be. That would be the new grant cycle till the first of December. He didn't know for sure. He was talking to the county about it. So if they do it then, it wouldn't most likely come due to the end of January. So we do have some time to work on this, come up with ideas, um, and um, we'll take suggestions as well. I'm sure you do it. Um, originally, we talked a little bit about um, a five foot wall. A lot of people told me, no, it should only be four feet. Plus, it's going to look like a prison. So, uh, all those things are still open. Any questions from the board? Mm -hmm. The board on chamber. They do have some tourism grants at our board meeting. Uh, we approved um, working with those um, apply for a grant. Um, the grant site lands on the 23rd. We're looking at trying to put something in for this year or working with them next year. If we want, we can um, try to write our own grant for tourism for our area if we want. Did you find out uh, where those books came from? Oh, the county yes. had all those books or whoever had them? Um, yeah, I didn't get a chance to talk. Because they looked like they were really good books and I didn't know whether they had to pay for them to get those books. Yeah, I think the one the county put together and then they had another book um, at 395 put together over by Boron. Yeah. They advertised in that. Uh, so they're looking at maybe um, pamphlets we can hand out. Or they're talked about maybe doing a website for the for our the East Kern area to promote uh, tourism within East Kern. So did the Board of Trade one time have a, a program that they put out from <clears throat> Lancaster all all the things that's happening on tourism and stuff like this one time? Oh well, Lancaster. No, like they were not mixed with Lancaster. Yeah, Kern County is separate. Yeah, I know. And they, they have ten thousand dollars available and they said they would extend to 14 days if they didn't get enough application. So Shelly said that she would write the grant, I think it's 16 to 20 pages again. Um, so she was talking about working on that. Um, Mojave approved working with us on uh, tourism grant. Uh, if we want to apply for one ourselves, we can do one next year. Um, they just take time to put all that in. High speed rail, which is never going to get built, but it's going to go right west of 60th Street, coming up through that thing. So Diamond Street is safe, so it's not going to be retarded because it went down Diamond Street, all the businesses on the east side would be destroyed. And so what happened is with the, with the, the uh, these people actually saying it's going to go someplace about T Street, coming not through Lancaster, I don't know where those people really look at this thing, and then it's going to cut across, and there's a little hank right by the, uh, the uh, if you look at this off uh, 60th Street, it's going, to, it's going to tear Gene Meltzer's house up. <laughs> And so, but it, what happened is this high-speed rail does not stop anywhere in the valley except Palmdale. And so they're putting it in so that you won't have. If they really wanted to do the high-speed rail, I finally decided that it's just a money maker for those people that are on the board for Zion and all these plans. But I'm telling you right now that that high-speed rail goes in, and a lot of people say it is great. It's really great. We should have one. But uh, the United States is not Japan, and it's not France, and it's not any small country. It is a huge area. I can just say, I've got John, 
Could you drive your car down to Palmdale and park it there and then get on the high speed rail and go to San Francisco and then have to pay for all that stuff when actually your fare doesn't even pay for the train? But would you ride that thing? If I had a reason to go to San Francisco, I might <laughs> consider it because riding a train is very luxurious. I've written several. You can read books. You can read reports. Uh, it's an enjoyable ride. But I would consider it. I'm not going to rule it out yet. What would be the cost to go from Palmdale to San Francisco? Oh, well, it, they, don't know. they don't know yet. They don't know yet? But I'll tell you, the trains I've ridden, a shorter distance, getting on and off them much, much more convenient than going through airline, yeah. pat down, check, x-ray, special. That's what I was thinking that if you were taking a vacation to San Francisco, I do not like that six hour drive. I mean, how, how fast, you know, is it that it's going to take you from Palmdale to San Francisco? About four hours. Two hours? <laughs> I mean, I would be willing to take my suitcase to this to Palmdale to go to San Francisco. So, but you know, I, I was wondering, will that give our people more opportunities for jobs? No. No. So. Well, building it will. Building it would put a lot of construction people to work. There are a lot of contracts for a project like that. Contracts to build the cars, contracts to manufacture the rail, contracts to actually build the bridges. Lots and lots of contracts. The reason I want to use Fox on it because you're a businessman, you talk to everybody in the valley, you know more about it than anybody does. And so thank you very much for doing that and sharing it. I didn't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> okay. Okay, Laura, you got some comments? Um, yeah, I actually, because Jordan's here, I want to actually thank you for, you know, <coughs> the leadership of your September Fest. So, thank you for all your uh, hard work on kind of being the chairperson and being the leader of it. So, thank you, and I want to thank you for all the work you've done as an office. And Okay. Well, since uh, now our chamber is growing, you know, if you guys know anybody that could volunteer, we like to keep the chamber open at least three days a week. We can't do it five days, but if you could help us out, find some one or two days volunteer, we would appreciate it. I mean, we want to make sure that we are open so people know we are in the business from 8 to 12 or 8 to 4. That's my goal is, and uh, we've been struggling to find people, but <coughs> if you guys know, pass word around, and if you know somebody that... Is there money in the budget? <coughs> Is there anybody even part-time to come in? No, we don't have much money we coming in, but we will be broke in six months or two months, three months. If you oh, it's, all, it's more of all the fees that you have to pay when you go to hire somebody. And Social Security and all the other ten things. Ten dollar an hour and work on comps. We just want enough money coming in. We don't have enough to be fundraiser where we can raise the money. So they have no budget for it. But volunteer would be a great way to do it. Comdale's doing it. Comdale got away with paying the learning from volunteers because they couldn't afford it even if they have, a, I believe, four or five hundred under. And we're at 73, so we have to get the membership a little more. Bill? Just want to give a little update as to what's going on with the community watch right now. Uh, this Saturday we do have our monthly cleanup. We're cleaning up the Jack in the Box field over there by Albertsons. Uh, sign up starts at 6.30. We should be wrapping up uh, around 11 o'clock and then have lunch 
provided afterwards. Uh, next Wednesday, the 21st, we do have our Coffee with a Cop here at Hummel Hall. That starts at 6 o'clock. Come out and meet your law enforcement, fire, base security, all those lovely people that, that are here serving our community. It will be our last Coffee with a Cop for the year. So our next one should be in, in January. Um, we did have some of our uh, board members go uh, to Bakersfield uh, last week and it, they attended the County Graffiti Task Force meeting and met with the, the county personnel that are in charge of graffiti abatement um, and trying to get more ideas from them as to what we could do, let them know what we're doing in the community to help fight graffiti locally and even got some more uh, supplies as far as paint and other uh, items that they were able to provide uh, to the community watch for graffiti abatement. And tonight we were planning on attending the WAM meeting or We Are at Mojave. Uh, out in Mojave they actually asked Rosen Community Watch uh, for more information on, on how to get uh, volunteers together and do things like the monthly cleanups that we're doing or the graffiti abatement programs. So we are getting more interest in what we're doing for the community from the communities that are surrounding us. So we're hopefully going to be parlaying that into more of a partnership with communities like Mojave, Tehachapi, and Boron. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.